Hello and thank you for watching this early June West weather update. For early June, we had some not very June like weather, I think, in the Pacific Northwest this past weekend. That's what we're looking down at here. This is a loop of total precipitable water derived from satellite here. Looking down at you know most of the eastern Pacific Ocean, you can see North America here. And if you look closely, you can see kind of this ribbon of increased moisture over the last three or four days flowing into the Pacific Northwest. That's an atmospheric river. We actually had another one here come through just kind of in the last 48 hours here. Brought some rainfall through the Western Oregon area, the coastal area, the Olympic Peninsula. We actually had a record for June broken in Western Washington, which is a very rainy area. You know, one of the rainiest areas uh, in the continental U.S. However, it wasn't a tremendous amount of rain comparing it to, you know, say a maybe January or February event. However, for June, when these events typically wane in frequency or in occurrences, it was a pretty anomalous event. Somewhat rare to see these events come through, but nonetheless, not unheard of. Uh, and we saw some precipitation come through nearly an inch in parts of the Willamette Valley uh, with some other areas getting some measurable precip uh, as well. But this kind of ushered in, uh, or this was a, a gate we passed through, it seems like, as this new pattern has built in. And this one will be defined more by heat. And that's what's going to really kind of dominate the forecast here, I think, over the first at least through this weekend, and then we'll kind of get into next week in this video to see how long that heat might last and when we might expect a break in it, or if it's going to stick around for the summer. That's a concern of mine. That's where we'll go on the forecast to try to get uh, an idea of that. Just kind of want to quickly double back on those rainfall amounts here. This is looking at the last three day totals of precipitation valid as of Wednesday morning here, so June 5th. So taking us through Sunday into Wednesday morning here, and you can see the rain anomalously so here for Western Washington, Western Oregon. Again, if we were looking at this map in February, it, you know, it'd be a healthy rain event, but not anything, uh, you know, to make the headlines. However, coming in early June, somewhat uh, rare, not what we typically expect given kind of uh, the seasonality of our precipitation events and some of this moving through parts of the uh, mountains of eastern Washington, parts of northern Idaho and the Panhandle region as well, getting in on some of this rainfall here and just a little bit here uh, in far northwest California. I mentioned this kind of ushered in a pattern shift. I was uh, actually in Portland here earlier this week and it was rainy and misty and windy. And then just here this morning, uh, you know, the kind of clouds cleared. You could start to feel some of that kind of more summer-like temperatures building in uh, and we're kind of feeling that shift here in the western U.S. The answer to what is happening, as is often the case when we do these forecasts, is above our heads. Uh, and so if we look at the 500 millibar wind pattern across North America, across the eastern Pacific right now, if we just kind of draw those wind trajectories around the western U.S., you can see this clockwise flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. See that here kind of centered right over... You know, I'd almost say Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, there you can see the Colorado River coming down through the Grand Canyon, through the lower Colorado River Valley. So really kind of Las Vegas, Lake Mead, Grand Canyon area is where the center of this is here on Wednesday. And it's right above one of these little cutoff flows. This kind of, this clockwise flow, this upper level ridge over a cutoff flow there, that is what we call a Rex block in the atmosphere. And we call it a block because it tends to block up the pattern of it. So it's kind of an immediate kind of flashing light or warning signal, if you will, that we could be sticking with a similar pattern for some time. Now, I don't know how much staying power this early block has, but if we kind of get in the pattern of setting these up more so in June and July, I think this heat could further entrench itself. So it's at least something to keep an eye on. Now that's all well out into the future. The immediate effects are being felt already. So we have excessive heat warnings. That is in this kind of dark pink color for parts of California. All of the Central Valley here, including the San Joaquin and uh, the Sacramento Valley, even getting a little bit closer over to some of these coastal areas along the foothills, maybe avoiding the immediate uh, coastal communities for now. Um, starting to get into some of these valleys and then stretching through, like I mentioned, that lower Colorado River Valley, kind of at the epicenter of the ridge right now, and then virtually the entire kind of southern lowlands and southern half of uh, Arizona. We jump over and just look at maximum temperatures today here for Wednesday afternoon, kind of right about as I'm recording this video here. You can see triple digits now pushing into the uh, Central Valley of California. I don't know if we'll quite reach this high. I'll have to look at some of the observations here in just uh, an hour or so. Uh, but nonetheless, we are seeing those triple digits getting cracked across the San Joaquin Valley. And then certainly here, triple digits across the lower Colorado River Valley, parts of uh, Las Vegas all the way down through the areas like Yuma and then over into southern Arizona as well, looking at triple digit um, anomalous temperatures. So 
we get triple digits certainly out into the end of June, into July, but this is uh, fairly anomalous here for uh, early June, at least the uh, magnitude of them. And then warming up even in some areas north. So we have the Snake River Valley looking at temperatures in the 80s. I mentioned the Willamette Valley warming up here today into the 70s, including some of eastern Washington and that, and then northwest Montana. And again, what is causing that is that clockwise flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And I, again, I think this gets mirrored, right? So it might be, might be that might be the clockwise flow. We'll see on the, uh, the playback here, you can correct me. Uh, but that ridge is kind of centered. We can see it here on the upper level height map from the ECMWF. I'll pull this back and make it valid as of Wednesday evening. And really what we're looking at here, these warmer colors signifying where we have above average heights here and the upper levels of the atmosphere, that's kind of signifying that ridge. You can kind of draw that clockwise circle around it. Again, centered right along kind of that Lake Mead, uh, Lake Powell area in Southern Nevada. Let's play this ECMWF forecast out into the future to see if this ridge is gonna stick around through the weekend, what might be the pattern next week, and then we'll stretch it out a little bit further to give us maybe an inkling, just a hint as to the staying power of it. So I'll play this through the day Thursday. Tomorrow you see it's not going anywhere. If anything, maybe pushing more up into the Pacific Northwest as we go through the day on Friday. By Saturday, uh, kind of getting a little bit more amplified, pinched off, if you will, pushing a little bit further up to the north. Still seeing some weak ridging here across the interior of the west, so likely looking at warm temperatures continuing into Saturday, likely into Sunday as well. But if you look closely, do you see this kind of weakness, if you will, this little bit of a dip here in the upper level height field? That's a weak trough trying to push in. It's about as weak as a trough can get, uh, you know, I would say. But nonetheless, I think it's going to be enough to bring some temperatures down, certainly along the coastal regions, compared to what we're seeing now, what we'll see tomorrow and Friday. We'll get something of a uh, moderation in temperatures for the immediate west coast and some of the inland valleys here as we go through the weekend. That'll be the theme. I think Saturday into Sunday. Now, as we go through Monday, that trough's gonna be moving through. We might get a little bit of precipitation out of this in the kind of northern US Rockies, maybe even up into northwest Montana, look maybe something like a quarter inch. It's a little bit far out in the forecast, so hard to be too precise with uh, rainfall amounts, but we might see some spotty showers a bit here in eastern Washington, parts of Oregon and the Snake River Valley. I don't think the um, accumulations will be too significant, but just given the kind of lingering heat in the area, that little bit of a disturbance coming through in the height field could be enough to kick off some showers or thunderstorms. Well, that takes us into Monday. Let's go all the way out to Tuesday, June uh, 11th here. And we can still see that weak ridging positioned over the Western US. Now it's not as strong on this forecast here from the ECMWF as it's forecast to be here tomorrow into Thursday and into Friday. So not expecting maybe as anomalous warm temperatures across the Western US getting out into the next work week. But I still think they'll be above average given the staying power of this ridge. And also see a, a coastal low here off the southwest coast of California. Forecast models right now have that weakening before really doing much for Southern California in the way of precip, but likely to keep maybe some coastal drizzle. Certainly, uh, unfortunately, probably strengthening the marine layer, keeping clouds a bit further inland through the work week next week. You know, there's this hope, I think I mentioned it in the video last week, maybe even the one before that as well, that, you know, one kind of caveat of bringing some warmer temperatures in, putting some ridging right over maybe the southwestern U.S. as it could help to erode that May gray. So that's something we'll be keeping an eye on now. And it's it's June now, right? So I can't call it the May gray anymore. It's the, uh, the June gloom, right? And so that has stuck around, um, but we are seeing some hints at weakening. I have a few slides on that in just a moment here. We'll take a look at that. Um, but at least the signal right now into the next work week from the ECMWF with that cutoff flow down here, just kind of pushing that marine layer inland, not a great forecast in terms of avoiding that low morning fog. And then unfortunately it's been lingering into the afternoon as well for a lot of these communities. We'll step through, this is the high temperature forecast from the National Weather Service. So we'll take it um, just out through the weekend here. This is uh, Wednesday afternoon. We already looked at this forecast. You can see Thursday temperatures rising ac across the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, again, prompting those excessive heat warnings. You have triple digits and beyond here in the lower Colorado River Valley, parts of uh, desert and Southeast California. We're talking 110, 111, potentially all the way up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit in some of these areas right along the Colorado River. So this is gonna be kind of peak summer heating here in early June, prompting, like I said, those excessive heat warnings. These are uh, days where you wanna stay out of the sun Stay inside as much as possible, in air conditioning, sunscreen, 
hydration, drink plenty of water, drink probably more water than you think you need to drink, especially if you're gonna be outside working in the sun because you can lose it very quickly with some of these high temperatures and high heat indices uh, on a day like today, especially early in the year when we kind of haven't acclimated to it and uh, it can kind of take people off guard a little bit in early June when, at least on the West Coast, our average weather in May and June uh, is it's typically not too hot. We have to wait a little bit more to get into kind of that peak heat of the summer. So these early heat waves um, can be a little bit more jarring, I think, for folks. So going into the day Friday, we can see a little bit of a moderation here, specifically in California. Not too much here across parts of the uh, southwest, but all the while, if you look at the northern states, Idaho, Oregon, eastern Washington, even northwest Montana, these states are getting warmer as we get toward the weekend. So peaking in this area here at the end of this work week here, but also just at that same time kind of pushing further north on Friday. Saturday, those temperatures continuing for the Snake River Valley into the high 90s near Boise, lower 90s here in the upper Snake River Valley, and then mid to high 90s, or I should say mid to low 90s, high 80s here in uh, parts of eastern Washington in the rain shadow there. The Willamette Valley, if you look at Friday into Saturday, actually cooling off a bit Saturday and then Sunday, as that is when, if you remember, we had that weakness, that kind of U shape and that height field here starting to push on shore. That's why if you look at the Central Valley, Sacramento and the San Joaquin and then some of the coastal areas, you see again that kind of waning and moderation of those temperatures going through the weekend. And finally on Sunday at this point, walking back some of the temperatures here across the Southwest. So kind of a cooling trend this weekend. I say cooling, we're still talking 90s. These are still hot days, still talking triple digits plus in Southern Arizona, still talking 90s in the Snake River Valley, near 80 in the Willamette Valley. So a kind of a warm summer like weekend ahead. I think for some folks, maybe in the Northwest, this is something maybe you're looking forward to just given how uh, gloomy it's been with the drizzle and the cloud cover and uh, finally a chance during the weekend to get outside and enjoy uh, kind of a more summer-like atmosphere here in early June. Uh, as you might expect with an upper level ridge dominating over the western U.S., a conversation about heat wave, excessive heat warnings, uh, not seeing a ton of significant precip to talk about. I'll take this through Thursday uh, into Friday. Not really anything on the radar, uh, for lack of a better word, no pun intended. Uh, maybe some spotty showers and thunderstorms at elevation as some of the heat builds into the interior here, um, but nothing major to talk about in some of the arable valleys here. Again, by late Sunday, with that kind of weak troughing moving in, could get some more spotty showers and thunderstorms in eastern Oregon, parts of the uh, elevation here in southwestern Montana or the Salmon River Mountains. Some of these, you know, can't rule out getting into the valleys, but nothing too significant forecast right now. The only kind of caveat here is potentially on Monday, northwest Montana, getting something of more measurable precipitation. Doesn't look like a significant rainfall event, uh, but we are seeing maybe something near a quarter inch. Can't rule out a little bit over that as we go through uh, Monday PM at least based on the CCMWF forecast. And then taking out into next week, again, not seeing anything too significant. By this time, this is kind of when that cutoff low is forecast to push inland across Southern California, maybe Arizona. Just not seeing a reflection of that, at least in the precipitation forecast for anything meaningful, meaningful or measurable uh, at this time. Although that could change if it hangs on to a little bit of its strength going into the end of uh, the next work week. Just look at seven day rainfall totals. This is from the ECMWF, so the same model we just kind of stepped through. Again, nothing too significant here, save for Northwest Montana. And even in that, uh, for most times during the uh, water year, wouldn't be too much to think about. Just some spotty showers here and some of the elevation regions. Want to touch on the May Gray, like I said I would. This is uh, Southern California. This is the satellite loop just from here on Wednesday afternoon. Now, Kind of the first thing you think, well, it's still here. We still have those uh, low clouds, the marine layer still pushing inland. You can kind of see the clouds streaming toward the northeast, but it's not as strong as it has been um, throughout the spring. If you look closely, it's really only just along the coastline here, maybe trying to get into some of these inland areas here, but um, in some of these more heavily populated areas, not pushing very far inland at all and staying out of the inland valleys um, where it's been kind of living for a long time, even into the afternoon in some of these areas. So the heat has weakened the marine layer. In fact, if you look closely near some of the islands down here, it's starting to get transparent. So we've shrank that uh, marine layer a bit. I think that shrinking will continue into tomorrow and then into Friday, keeping it more so along the coast and preventing it from getting too far inland, at least not through you know the lunch or afternoon period. So it's still lingering around. The good news is it's not nearly as strong as it has been this year. The kind of unfortunate kind of second part uh, to the slide, slide uh, portion of the talk is, um, Next week, you can see these forecast temperature anomalies from the ECMWF along the coastline. This is for 
all the way from Monday out to Saturday of next week. It's that cooler temperature. Not. This is kind of indicative, uh, I think, of it resolving kind of an increase in that June gloom activity going through next week. So with that cutoff low, trying to push inland, bringing more onshore flow, I think we see a return of it uh, next week, even with this interior heat over much of the western U.S. Uh, I'm pulling this up here. This is a very long-range forecast, so I'll... Uh, Put a big grain of salt on it there, but it's worth showing. This is from the ECMWF. I'll take this back. This is for all the way out into next weekend. Uh, so immediately this is already kind of a nine plus day forecast, but both the ECMWF and the GFS have been advertising a breakdown in the ridge pattern, potentially some troughing, cooler weather, maybe some precipitation for the Northwest, trying to push in at the end of next week, maybe sometime around next weekend. I'm showing this forecast specifically. It is the ECMWF, it's a product from them, but it's different than the ones I've shown before. It's different even um, from the ones I've shown many times from ECMWF. This is from, if you look closely here, the ECMWF AIFS. And this is their artificial intelligence forecasting system, given the kind of AIFS there. Um, this is a product that was released earlier this year. I've been keeping kind of a close eye on it, looking at its forecast, comparing it to the kind of flagship ECMWF, comparing it to the GFS, which is the American model. And surprisingly, at that kind of seven to 10 day window, this AI forecast has been doing pretty well. It hasn't been, you know, what I would call exceptional. We never expect, you know, forecasts to be too confident or, or too perfect or too good to be true kind of in that uh, window when naturally our confidence uh, starts to reduce a little bit. But it's been, as far as I can tell, pretty good at picking up on some of these early patterns. And it also so happens to be resolving that trough, trying to push into the Pacific Northwest again sometime next week and maybe even toward the end of the next week. So that is something to keep an eye on. If we jump over and look at the GFS, this is valid as of tomorrow on Thursday, showing the ridge that we've been talking about. But I'm just going to quickly drag it all the way out through next week, Wednesday. There's the ridge lingering across the interior. So warm temperatures continuing next work week. There's that cutoff low we talked about, increasing the marine layer activity in Southern and Central California. But as I take this forecast through Thursday from the GFS, then into Friday, finally into Saturday, all the way to mid-June now, June 15th, you can see that trough starting to push into parts of the Pacific Northwest. This would likely return precipitation, um, perhaps nothing too significant, but definitely precipitation in the forecast near next weekend, along with the, so we have a cool down in temperatures, certainly not talking about a heat wave or any heat warnings with this trough trying to push into the area potentially spreading across more regions in the West, bringing temperatures down in parts of California and Nevada. Now that is not kind of a slam dunk home run, take it to the bank forecast, but it's popping up in a lot of these forecast model runs. So I wanted to show it to you as a possibility. It would also mean a break in that heat uh, that we're building in here this week. So I think that's good news in the sense that the ridge that we build in across the West region parked over kind of the four corners Southwest area, I don't want that lasting, you know, all the way through July. We're going to really build up heat units. We're going to really stress uh, some of the forested areas. We're going to start stressing the water situation after we just got some bountiful snowpack, after we just started increasing Lake Mead and Lake Powell. So um, I don't think this is bad news necessarily, but potentially, you know, for folks in the Northwest who aren't uh, too excited about more precipitation ruining some of their uh, June plans, it is the, uh, uh, the reality of the forecast right now. Again, not a slam dunk, um, but it is a signal we're watching. Want to share with you, this is a new ECMWF forecast. This is the extended forecast looking all the way out to June 11th. So it's actually a temperature anomaly forecast starting on June 11th, ending July 11th, so a 30-day forecast. And it's it's been pretty consistent, I think, with a lot of the long-range forecasts this summer in advertising interior heat and, and uh, front range heat. And so you can see kind of the center of that heat anomaly, maybe right here across parts of Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, you know, at times likely including the Central Valley. However, if you look closely, coastal California, parts of Western Oregon, Western Washington remaining cooler. And this has been kind of a consistent signal this year where the kind of immediate coastal areas have been expected to remain cooler because we still have a lot of cool water here off the coast, which I'm painting in red. That's not the right color for, for cold water, but you'll have to take my word for it with more of that heat pushing inland, potentially looking at some ridging like this. That um, you know, would likely um, kind of suppress the monsoon season. It's hard to predict that this far out, but at least right now, if this forecast were to come to fruition kind of through July and then pushing in after that, um, I think there's a potential that we could have a weakened uh, monsoon season. Naturally, you know, this warm weather, if it comes true, 
is not going to build into the west without a big ridge and these ridges uh, you know as we know keep out precipitation so it's not a huge surprise if we look at precipitation anomalies over that same time time uh, frame i want to line that up exactly to june 11th you can see that dearth of precipitation across the western u.s forecasted right now from the extended uh, ecmwf model we also had a new ecmwf uh, seasonal forecast come in this is a temperature anomaly for not only into July, July, August, and September. And I think this one, this one caught my eye a little bit because again, we have four corners heat. We've been talking about that four corners and front range heat, but also again, extending that kind of cooler temperature signal across the immediate west coast. That's been kind of a consistent signal. We've seen this one maybe even more so than some of the past runs here uh, for late summer. So perhaps the heat concern's not as high here for parts of Western Oregon, the Willamette Valley, Western Washington. You know, I mentioned earlier with some of those ocean temperatures kind of scooting toward the northeast. And what I mean by that, we had that warm blob in the North Pacific, I'll show you in a minute, continuing to push toward the northeast. And we saw that in some years with big heat, big wildfire seasons along the, the uh, west coast, along the northwest, Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, something maybe like 2021. And, uh, you know, I was growing concern for maybe a repeat of a 2021 like summer with a lot of heat building into the Pacific Northwest, southern British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, uh, northern Idaho. But at least right now, these seasonal forecasts still keeping that heat more over the Four Corners region, not pushing it up as much into the northwest. So this forecast here, this latest one just came out uh, today from the ECMWF, kind of pushing that heat again more toward the interior, lessening the risk of severe heat issues here in the Northwest uh, this summer. If we look at the precipitation, you can see that weaker monsoon forecast. You park a big ridge here over the uh, Four Corners region, it's gonna be hard to get more of that uh, Pacific and Atlantic moisture pulled up, again, from the Eastern Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico, which would lessen the monsoon season. If we look at the wildfire outlook, uh, this is from the NIFC, the National Interagency Fire Center. This just came out here. Uh, in June as well. Kind of not a surprise to see some kind of elevated fire risk here in parts of New Mexico, far eastern Arizona, Colorado. But even in the interior here, these are areas that are still expected to be warmer here this summer from a lot of these different forecasts. If you kind of draw a line here across the western U.S., areas up here got less than average snowpack. So not as bountiful of a water year compared to folks down here, compared to California, and that is going to keep uh, wildfire risks elevated here. I think for maybe the more Pacific Northwest or more Northern Idaho, we'll have to keep an eye on this area. If we build in some of these ridges more toward the Northwest, which we just talked about, but those perhaps lessening in likelihood, those wildfire chances could still elevate. In fact, if you kind of were to pull up and overlap the drought monitor, we still have some lingering dryness up here in the Northern US Rockies. So this area in general, we're gonna keep an eye on here as we go through late summer, but at least right now, the uh, outlook for August of 2024 looks like this. Uh, with the latest update for wildfires. I wanted to pull up those sea surface temperature anomalies. This is as of uh, June 4th, just yesterday here. Kind of immediately, we still see those colder ocean temperatures off the southwest of California. That's that negative uh, Pacific meridional mode. Can see that often in these developing La Nina years. If you look to the north of Hawaii, we still see that warm blob. And this was, what I was talking about at times, was trying to push toward the northeast. That kind of encroachment toward Washington or encroachment toward British Columbia has started to stop a little bit, not seeing it push as far northeast, seeing it actually kind of re-strengthen here in the North Pacific. If it stays there, if it kind of behaves in that way as we go more through summer into June and July, and we kind of keep the colder water here that you can see north of the blob here near Alaska, near the Gulf of Alaska, which is in here, with the colder water here near California, that's more of that kind of negative PDO signature with the water the uh, water's colder here. And we get those negative PDO summers, we don't typically, it can happen, we don't typically see as much heat concern built in in those same areas. And that's really consistent with the forecast that we just looked at in the long range or in the seasonal from the ECMWF. So these, you know, the forecast is lining up with the sea surface temperatures here. I mean, that makes sense. Um, and it's enough to kind of assuage some of my fears that I had uh, in late spring about the uh, Northwest heat concern. Um, just kind of show you this, I did a, a correlation plot here. This is with the negative PDO and uh, temperatures. And you know, with the temp with those ocean temperatures not encroaching as far northeast, if we go through the summer with that negative PDO pattern, that is cold water here off the northwest, cold water here south of uh, southwest of California and west of uh, Mexico. We tend to get warmer temperatures here, which I've color shaded as uh, a correlation. Actually made it a negative correlation. 
um, because we're in a negative PDO. So negative um, and a negative makes a positive. So all to say that these the yellow colors here mean warmer than average uh, in a negative PDO scenario. So something like we'd be seeing this summer. And this lines up very closely with those seasonal forecasts we just looked at, right? Heat more so over the interior, more so over Nevada, Utah, Colorado, maybe the front range, um, than say right along the coastal areas like the Willamette Valley or coastal California. Uh, unfortunately for folks in the Central Valley, um, often when you get this interior heat, it can bleed into parts of the San Joaquin Valley first, and then if it inches further westward, then into the Sacramento Valley uh, as well. So you're kind of at a fork in the road here, but you tend to get in on some of the heat stress here that builds in over the interior more so than coastal California or more so than uh, the Willamette Valley up in uh, Oregon. If we get those same precipitation, or I should say the same correlations with uh, precipitation here, uh, and then again, I've color coded it, at least intuitively for me, which would mean that uh, warmer colors on precipitation means uh, less uh, rainfall. And so seeing less rainfall across the western region here, if this negative PDO signature holds up through the summer, which it appears like it wants to do. And again, this looks pretty similar to those kind of seasonal precipitation forecasts we looked at with less precipitation across the west region, a little bit less here across the uh, kind of the southwest for the monsoon season here. And this is July uh, through September correlations kind of right into the heart of that monsoon season. You know, I say that but these correlation values are only, I mean, this green is 0.1. You know, this is not something you'd want to make, you know, bet your life savings on. So it, it's leaning that way. Um, but, you know, to give you a non-answer here, I mean, a meteorology long-range forecast is just not, it's not a home run, it's not a slam dunk. Um, you know, there at times I've, there's been patterns that have kind of hinted themselves that we could get a monsoon out of, uh, at least briefly, or, or at times in uh, July and September. So, the expectation now is for a weak monsoon, I think, for parts of the southwest, but I could see the scenario where that heat builds further north. That allows some moisture to get underneath here. Uh, we end up with something closer to average. So um, just because this coloring is yellow here, that's really only kind of something around a 0.3, so leaning toward drier, um, but you can never be too confident with these long-range forecasts. Uh, with that note, um, I'll finish it up here today. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you all next Wednesday.